Hello? Hello? Welcome to... Starting off the news this week, a SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket went up on Sunday, carrying a record number of 143 spacecraft to orbit, some of which being their own Starlink satellites, which carry the company's hopes for a global high-speed internet system. The previous record was 104, and that was made in 2017. Coupled with SpaceX's reusability, the ability to launch this many satellites at once means they can offer relatively very low prices to companies who wish to put something in orbit. In other news, we have a very interesting paper published this week which has investigated what baby tyrannosaurids would have looked like. Describing an embryonic jaw likely from Daspletosaurus, as well as an embryonic claw from Albertosaurus, plus a tooth from a perinatal Albertosaurus, paleontologists studying these specimens have been able to determine roughly what size Tyrannosaurid hatchlings would have been. The embryonic Daspletosaurus would have been about 71 centimetres long, while the embryonic Albertosaurus was likely 1.1 metres long. And it also indicates that Tyrannosaurid eggs, which so far have never been found, were probably about 43 centimetres long. It was also discovered that the Despletosaurus jawbone was already displaying some characteristic Tyrannosaurid features at this young age. So some brilliant research that will hopefully aid paleontologists in one day finding more baby Tyrannosaurs and possibly the first Tyrannosaurid eggs. And now over to Ben, or as I like to call him. Thanks Doug. Also in the recent paleontology news is an incredible paper that answers the age-old question of what did dinosaur cloacas look like? The cloaca, the name of the singular opening at which the urinary, digestive and reproductive tracts end in many different kinds of animals, has never been properly studied in non-avian dinosaurs before, but an exceptionally well-preserved specimen of the early Cretaceous Ceratopsian Cetacosaurus has allowed paleontologists to examine the external appearance of this structure for the first time. This same Cetacosaurus specimen is actually the one that enabled researchers to reconstruct an incredibly detailed view of its coloration and scale patterning back in 2016 that demonstrated countershading in this animal, and their investigation of its cloaca has found that the scale anatomy and pigmentation of this region was distinct from the surrounding areas, suggesting that the vent was perhaps being used in a display function. Additionally, the lobes present on the sides of the vent are suggested to have potentially had scent glands within them, similar to what's seen in living crocodilians. So the fact that non-avian dinosaurs were possibly signalling to each other with their cloacas opens up some fascinating new behavioural implications that were not previously appreciated, showing how important it is to study every part of these prehistoric animals' anatomy. And finally for this week, Spinosaurus is back at it again. This research was actually published a couple of weeks ago but we seem to have missed it. Essentially paleontologists have assessed the arguments put forward in the famous tail paper published last year in which it was hypothesised that Spinosaurus was a specialised swimming pursuit predator of aquatic prey, as indicated by its newt-like tail, finding that the available data does not support this interpretation. Instead, they favour a wading model in which the dinosaur fished from shorelines or shallow waters, and the tail fin is instead considered to be a display structure. So Spinosaurus causing some controversy. What's new there? Anyway, back to Doug, wherever he is. Thank you, Ben. That's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you at some point during the next 7 days, probably. <laughs>